Good morning, everyone. I thought about running out here like a motivational speaker and just slapping hands. Really shock you, you all for my last, last go around here. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to another Sunday morning here at Trinity. I um, want everyone here to know where, whoever you are, wherever you are on your journey of faith, this is a safe space for you. You are, you are so very welcome here. Um, I will be joined in this service uh, with help uh, from Chris, who will do our call to worship. Of course, Camille is playing for us today. Scott will help us out with some song leading. Um, we also have Don, who's going to do um, some scripture reading, as will Robin. And Vern's going to do our benediction today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris uh, to call us to worship. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing, Sing out, out the, the praises, praises of God. God. Come, all you people, and know the joy of the Lord. The love of God, God is greater than the tongue can tell. Bless the Lord, all you people. Bless his holy name. We come, come to, to praise, praise and worship and honor, honor and glory by your name, O Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we uh, bring in the uh, entrance of the light. Uh, as we sing, Come Thou Almighty King, hymn number six, verses one, two, and three. What's one, two, and three? Yeah. Okay, verses one, two, and three, and it's number 61 in the hymnal. Seated. Sorry. That was a quick one. <laughs> so we'll skip through these. <laughs> now it's uh, time to lead us in the gathering of our prayers together as a congregation. It's that time again where we have, uh, we're taking in the prayer requests of our community, and this is how we come closer, grow closer together. What are the prayer requests today? Jerry. I guess great news from the doctor is always wonderful. And, uh, all those things, COVID, pet scan, COVID free, it's great to be free. And thank you to everyone for, and thank you to everyone for prayers and the support in this time. Um, Trudy? Okay, prayers for Dixie, uh, for Dixie and her friend, Dixie and oh, from back, her friends back east. Uh, prayers for them, they're struggling through some flu-like symptoms and also travel mercies as she goes to the park. Any other prayers? Yes.
uh, this is from Al, prayers for Al and his uh, sister Marguerite, and who's, uh, we need healing on surgery. Wednesday. Surgery Wednesday, that we guide the doctors, have the doctors be in their, have God in control of their hands and help with the healing. Thank you. Joanne? That's a big prayer. Prayers for world peace, uh, Ukraine, and just in our country as well, the struggles that we're going through. We just pray that God uh, just, gosh, would just bless everyone with his never-ending love. Okay, we give thanks for the prayer, thanks for um, the French family. Uh, two birthdays, daughter and father. Uh, we're just so thankful that truly their lives are, are get God's gift to us and just for all the things and service they do and all the things that they share in their lives to make us more whole and complete. Any other prayers? Sherry. Nate, we love you, man. <laughs> I, I saw you back there, and I was just so overjoyed to see you. Uh, just prayers for his 30-day sobriety. Uh, we just give thanks that the Lord has intervened in your life to give you strength and to do these things, because we know that you can't, it's hard to do it alone. And the Lord's always with you, and we are too. But, man, I love you, and it's great to see you. Thank you. Any other prayers? Yes, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Prayers for the people in Florida who are suffering from the horrible effects of Hurricane Ian. Uh, just prayers that we can uh, just protect the people that are there and be with those that have lost lives that are struggling with their loss. Scott. for the music team, okay? <laughs> Camille and Scott have been doing a great job. I just think they do great. I'm thankful that we can have music and have all these things go on. Yes, Betty. Prayers for the McMurtry family, and, and, uh, and hopefully we can reach out and touch their lives and bring them peace in this situation. Loss is just a really big struggle and hard to deal with. Any other prayers? Thomas. James, I'm sorry. Prayers for James's grandmother. Uh, her, she lost her dog in, in the move to a care home, and that uh, you know our little little furry animals are just like family. And losing them is a really big deal and a really big struggle. Not to have their support and their love. Pets can treat us, teach us so much about life and love and everything. So just prayers for uh, James's grandmother. Rudy. Prayers for Judy, Trudy's friend, Becky, uh, who, who lost her friend to a heart attack. Um, you know, our relationships are really a big deal. They 
to give us support, to get us through life, get us through our struggles. And they pray for us, too, as well. So just prayers for Becky there. Any other prayers? Prayers for Sarah. It's so good to see her. Um, as many of you know, her mom officiated my wedding, and you know, there's, there's just a special connection. And anyhow, we're just so happy to see her, and we're thankful that she came to visit us. And with her million-dollar smile, we, we're just blessed to have her here. Thank you. I have two prayers my, for myself. Uh, one is for Marcia. She fell on her hip a couple of weeks ago, about 10 days ago, and she's just having trouble getting around, but she is getting better. Uh, just prayers that she continue to get better. And uh, another prayer for my brother from another mother, <laughs> uh, Alpheus. It's his last Sunday, and I just, I'm so thankful I got to meet him, and uh, just all the things that he's taught me spiritually, and just in relationships and, and with people and, and how to deal with things. i just so thankful that he's here. And just a plug, he's going to be available at coffee hour if you want to say goodbye to him. And, and just, you know, it was just a great time to have him. But thank you for being here. Okay. Okay, can I have you just bow our heads for a quick prayer here? Uh, God of grace, God of love, thank you for our congregation. Thank you for everybody that's here that had take, who has helped us take a part in it, to help us grow in your word, to grow in your love. We just give thanks for everything you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So next, can, if we can have you pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now Scott and Camille are going to lead us in our favorite song request. Did anyone want to do number 61? Come thou almighty king. It's already on the board. I think we can get it back. Otherwise, does anyone have a prayer request? Or you're welcome to ask for that one. <laughs> the rules of asking for a song is you must know it, and you need to identify two verses. One forty three. There we go. One forty three. I need to get here. <laughs> and God will raise you up. Grace, do you know the number? Oh. We'll find it in the back. Three seventy eight. And do you have a preference of one of the six verses? Should we do one and six then? Okay. i 
once was lost, but now I have found, was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, I shall Now Don will lead us uh, in the uh, Hebrew scripture, Psalm number 66. Just waiting for the screen to change there. There we go. Shout for go gl joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praises glorious. Say to God, how awesome you are in deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He's turned the sea into dry land. They, plas they pass through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his powers and his eyes watches the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all people. Let the sounds of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God tests us. You refine us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to this place of abundance. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks Amen. be to God. God. And now we'll share our gifts from God as an offering will be taken during the uh, uh, song played by Camille. Thank you. Now please stand as you are able as uh, Robin reads us the reading from the Christian gospel. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, 
Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The word inspired by God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So it, it matters how you start, matters how you finish, it matters how you navigate the transitions. Life, once described by a cinematic sage as being like a box of chocolates, has also been said to play out like a series of chapters bookended by meaningful events. And while we tend, to move more readily, uh, we tend to more readily recall those impactful moments that mark the beginnings and the endings of different moments, those moments that we weave into our stories, that we tell ourselves about ourselves, about others, isn't it true that most of our lives are lived in those liminal spaces, those in-between moments that adding up bit by bit, in a, in a, in a way, we... Um, look back on them, and that's how we kind of gain meaning, right? So these are the spaces where habits are formed, where routines take root, where day-to-day -day expectations are established and met. These are the spaces of waiting and creating. And to be sure, there are other factors to consider when we're teasing out identity and the accompanying tendencies that work to inform the ways in which we move through the world the building blocks that we're born with and given, our personality traits, our dispositions, the emotional and spiritual condition of those who culturally mold us and hold us. Are you shy or outgoing? Are you patient or impulsive? Are you a risk taker? Are you reserved? How aware are you of these traits and how they inform your decision-making process? Earlier this week, aware of my kind of perpetual pull to always achieve, I decided to fight myself a little bit and take a little me time by watching something fun on Netflix. Obviously, it didn't work because I am talking about it now. <laughs> I managed to weave it into a sermon and achieve, because that's what I do. Uh, but at the time, it was like downright mutinous against my grain. Like, I'm going to do something fun. So anyway, I ended up watching this show about magic tricks. There's a Los Angeles-based magician who has reeled some kids into his web of hijinks at a picnic table in a local park. His game of the day is that classic three-cup shuffle where you take like a coin or something and put it under a cup and shuffle. So he has a golden-wrapped chocolate coin that he puts under a cup and he shuffles it around and has the kids guess which cup it's under. Side note, this is kind of like a review of what we've talked about before. Something I learned while watching this play out is not unlike those storytelling tropes that we talked about a few weeks ago, magic tricks often play out over peaks and valleys. The magician kind of guides you along these series of ups and downs, these emotionally wrought like highs and lows. So on that note, this particular ma magician tells the camera that his first step in the ploy is going to be the, to boost the confidence of the kids by allowing them to win a practice round. He's gonna start them out up here. So they start on the high, and then the real game begins. They're playing for keeps. He places the coin under a cup, and he moves it around really, really slow, exceedingly slow. It's, uh, it's obvious which cup this is under, right? So then he has the kid pick the cup that the coin is hiding under. But when he removes it, cruelty, 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 not only is there no gold coin, but it's been replaced by a stalk of broccoli. <laughs> he says, you lose, you know what that means, eat up. <laughs> and the terror and disappointment on these kids' faces is, is just torturous. But there is one kid who's like, yum, broccoli, and it just like throws a hitch in that plan. But the rest of them are just disgusted. But guess what? He sweetens the pot. He doubles up. Okay, now there, there are two coins. You can opt in and play again, which all of them do. So he puts the, the, the two coins under the cup. Same thing happens. Two stalks of broccoli. They have to eat it up. So this gimmick goes on until finally he pulls out a clear cup, and he's like, here you go. I'll help you out. I'm going to put the coin under a clear cup. Does the shuffle. 
shuffle, 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 has him pick, he pulls it up, yeah, you won. There, there's the gold coin. But if you had picked one of these two cups, he pulls up the other cups, and just tons of coins pour out of these cups. <laughs> these poor kids are just like, just made. What if you had picked one of these, he says. So this is like one of those examples when the prospect of reward outweighs the potential risk of unsolicited nutrition, right? Risk versus reward, impulse versus patience. Since the 19, early 1970s, there's been the, a series of um, experiments carried out by social scientists and that some of you may have heard of. It's all about delayed gratification. It's called the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. And this experiment took a kids ranging from three to five, put them in a room, and tested their ability to double their pleasure, double their fun, by waiting patiently for a treat. So researchers, researchers gave them the choice of a small, immediate award, which was a, a single marshmallow that they could eat right away, or they could double their haul if they could just wait 15 minutes while no one was watching, they would get two marshmallows. But the trick was the marshmallows are sitting there staring at them the whole time, okay? <laughs> so as with many studies, researchers couldn't account for every variable, right? So that didn't stop them from drawing conclusions. And as such, there are debates that are swirling about their findings. But here's what they found. One of the outcomes that the, uh, that the researchers found was that the children that they studied who could wait longer for the, for the bigger payout tended, as life moved on, to enjoy what we might consider to be greater rewards in their life in general. They, as they aged, they tended to be more academically, professionally accomplished than their counterparts. They're, they were more physically fit. Patience became this, idea, this, this virtue that we practice and perform. So now we'll switch to another thing. If you had kids growing up around the same time, or perhaps you were an adolescent growing up, you may have made your way to the cinema to see Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from 1971, a film ad adaptation starring Gene Wilder that was adapted from Roald Dahl's book, Charlie, Ch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which he, he wrote in about 1964, I think. So this was and still is a cultural touchstone that deals with risk and reward, patience and impulse, the immeasurable delight that attends to some instances of delayed gratification. So in this tale, if you're not familiar with it, which probably most of you are, a reclusive chocolatier holds a competition that will see him throw open the doors of his sweet tooth's paradise to five lucky kids who will get, not only get to tour his factory, but they'll get a lifetime supply of chocolate as a reward. The price of admission is a golden ticket, which will be hidden in mil amongst millions of bars. There are only five of them, millions of bars of candy sent out around the world. So you have to buy a chocolate bar for, you know, back then I guess it was like a pence or something like that, but it would probably be a dollar now. So you buy all these chocolate bars in hopes of gaining this reward of a golden ticket that will get you into the chocolate factory. Long story short, all of the tickets are claimed. Four kids who get them are just ridiculously spoiled and rude, impulsive, and they treat the golden ticket like this is the reward. This, this tour is my reward. So they show up. They don't even pretend to be gracious for a second. Ultimately, each one of them has an untimely exit from the tour. And there's only one left, Charlie, who's an outlier of the group. He's well-mannered, he's poverty-stricken, he's a gentle dreamer of a boy. And by making it through the entire tour, he later finds that this has all just been a test that, that sees him inherit not just a lifetime supply of chocolate, he gets the entire factory. He inherits the factory. So here's where we're going to make our little transition into scripture and make a connection. We have a psalm and a song, which is a song of, of prayer outlining outsized risks, the abundance of rewards garnered from putting one's trust in an awesome God. A God who may, while noting our desire for the gift of gilded chocolate, offers a bit of bitterness instead, trying us as silver is tried. The scripture says, you have brought us into the stronghold. You have laid heavy burden on our hips. You have let people ride over our head. We came through fire and water, but you brought us out into abundance. 
Or if we turn to Luke now and we find Jesus in this liminal space, this space in between. He's traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee where he's stopped by ten men suffering from leprosy. This is an event. They call out to him pleading for mercy. Jesus responds, go and show yourselves in person to the priests. So now we're stepping into a liminal space, a space of transition. Now here I'll give you a little background so we can all understand what's going on here. Leprosy in ancient Israel was a disease that rendered the carrier ritually unclean. And so after being diagnosed by a priest, a funeral service of sorts was held that marked the departure of the person suffering from the disease from the rest of the community. They were outcasts. Lepers were sent to the outskirts of town. They couldn't be a part of the family or community anymore. But on the off chance that they found themselves miraculously healed, there was another ritual prescribed by Mosaic law that could reinstate them into the family life, into society. So this is what Jesus is doing. He's testing their faith. He's asking them to believe that they are indeed already healed by going and showing themselves to the priest before the act has already been done. So all of the ten take off. They take Jesus' command to go and show themselves to the priest. And on the way, in that middle space, the miracle happens. One of the group notices this. He has, in fact, been healed. And instead of continuing toward the temple like the others and the reward of being reinstated into society, he turns around and makes his way back to Jesus to give thanks. His, we can safely say, is an act of delayed gratification that, in turn, leads to abundance. As Jesus notes, it's not just an act of physical healing from his sickness that the man is gifted. Your faith, Jesus says, has saved you. This is the true reward. This is the true inheritance. Your faith has saved you. In the end, it isn't, in the end, when we, when we all think about this, isn't that what patience and delayed gratification are truly about? Your faith, the promise of reward, even if it takes chewing a few stalks of broccoli to get there, leads to reward. So here's what I believe. I believe that while all of you here in this congregation at Trinity, like so many other churches and communities around the state, around the country, around the globe, have suffered your fair share of setbacks and bumps in the road over the years, I believe you have prayed your prayers for healing and those prayers have been heard. And while there may be days to come that still feel like you're lost in that space between being tried still as silver is tried, I implore you all to hold fast to your faith and to give praise because in the end, though the gratification may seem a bit delayed, it is your faith that will ensure your blessing of a true inheritance, whatever that may be. It is your faith at the chapter's end that will save you. Shout for joy to God, all the earth, says the scripture. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. And they will be. Amen. So now we will transition into communion. Do we have Tommy to help us out? Communion is an act of sharing in God's love with one another and acknowledging in a tangible way the blessing of our common life with and in God. It is a divine gift that reminds us of the many ways that God continues to satisfy our deeper hungers for love, wisdom, care, and community. In the United Methodist Church, communion is always open to all who wish to partake. And as we partake, I pray that God's blessing and spirit be poured out on this bread and this cup. And I invite you all to join us down.
Thank you, siblings in Christ. Now please stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 156. Uh, I love to sell, tell the story, verses 1 and 3. Thank you. Uh, now please remain standing as Vernon leads us in the benediction prayer, after which we will answer that benediction by hing singing hymn number 701, When We All Get to Heaven, verses 1, 3, and 4. As you leave this place, remember that you do not go alone. God is close at hand. He hears the cry of all who call on his name. He honors those who honor him, listening to their prayers and coming to their aid. So go from here with joy and confidence. To serve and serve God and one another. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for worship today. Have a wonderful day and blessed week. Amen. Thank you all for joining us.